So when you get your Battleborn batteries, they come in a nice big, thick, heavy box like this. And uh, you're going to want to open them up, of course. And they have some really good thick foam packaging. And on the first one, you're going to want to save that. I'll show you why here in a minute. And uh, if you bought heated models, you'll notice they come with some red cables. Some of them you're going to use and some of them you're not. So this aside to keep them. This is the wonderful foam packaging, which serves as a landing pad. Use the top and bottom piece for your AGM batteries as you pull them out. You'll notice when you get the battery uncovered, there's a set of screws right here on the top. And what you're going to want to do is um, go ahead and put them, before you do anything else, put them on the battery. And you want to use the shorter of the two long bolts. You're going to end up with two of the long 5 sixteenths. Oops, oh, please. You can see the difference here. There's a long and a short bolt. Let's see if I can pull that so you can see it. There you go. There's a long and a short bolt. And the long one is really only necessary if you have a whole bunch of cables. And you should never have a whole bunch of cables on one terminal. If you're doing that, you're probably doing something wrong. So set aside the long ones just in case you decide later that you really need them for whatever reason. And then go ahead and put the short bolt through a washer through the post from the center of the battery towards the outside, put another washer on the other side, and then snug up the nut. These are locking nuts. Snug up the nut until it's just finger tight. This is now not going to come off of the battery, and um, then it's ready available. You can't lose it during moving the battery around or testing how it's going to fit or where you're going to put it. You're not going to lose the pieces parts. And they'll be ready to go when you're ready to put the cable on. So again, short bolt, washer, through the post from the center towards the outer edge of the battery. Washer again, not finger tight, so you get it loose again later on. You'll need a pair of eight uh, half inch wrenches to tighten these really tight so that the cables can't even rotate on, put on the bolts. To keep them in place. This battery is now ready to go. Again, I've saved the heat connectors and I'm going to set this outside with this wrap off. And I'm saving, whoop, I'm saving my two foam pieces to create a landing pad for the AGMs as I take them out. All right, welcome to the underside of a. K model Travato. A little, less, a little more space under here than on a G. Um, everything is harder to do on a G because of how cramped it is. Okay, so what we're going to do here on this K model Travato is we're going to unbolt electrically and then remove the batteries uh, in preparation of swapping them out for lithium model Battleborn. So um, when removing the batteries, you need a half inch socket wrench. Um, and in my case, I've got the handle covered up with electrical tape so that I'm less likely to short anything. But here's the trick. Start with the ground. The grounds are on the right side of the batteries looking backwards at the face of them, looking towards the tail of the vehicle. Um, the grounds are on the right side, the positives are on the left side, and there may not be anything on the front of the battery, only on the top, that, that tells you this. So you kind of have to sort of be careful. But um, I'm going to start by feeling up in here, and on the right side of this battery, I'm feeling a nut, and I'm feeling a cable coming up to it. And this one only has one connection to it because it crosses over to the other battery where it'll have probably three, because they put the solar on the right side battery as well. Um, so I'm going to start here because it's easiest, and I'm going to take my half-inch wrench and get it on that nut and turn it off. Now, if I can't get the nut on the wrench, what may have happened is that the cable uh, where the, where the um, 
connector at the end of the cable, the terminal, uh, is bolted down by the nut, if the cable itself is bent up over the nut, you might not be able to get that. And that happens sometimes if they've bolted it together and then they shove it in place and the cable bends backwards over the top of the post, making it extremely hard to get that nut off. And you basically have to push the cable back down out of your way before you can get your wrench on the nut. In this case, it's very easy to do. And I'm not concerning myself right now with accidentally shorting the ground side to anything metal on the chassis because um, I don't have, um, uh, well, because ground of the battery is ground of the chassis. That's the same. So there's no potential difference. So I'm not going to have any sparks by starting on the ground. My wrench going to turn off. And get down on there. And then the first, oh, the first turn is usually the hardest. Yeah, now it's loose. And then usually you can finger it the rest of the way off. Once you get it loosened enough, you, know, you break it. Once you break it loose, usually the nut comes off real easy. So there's my nut. And uh, although I'm going to discard these AGMs, I'm going to keep the nut anyway. Now, because I'm upgrading um, to lithium batteries and an inverter, I'm actually going to pull remove completely these cables, the crossover cables, the ground cable, everything except the positive uh, cable that doesn't cross over, but rather goes up to the black box. Um, that's what I'm going to do on this particular install. If you are only swapping your two AGMs for two Battleborns and not doing anything else, do not remove any of these cables. You're going to put, in fact, pay attention to where they connect, label them even maybe, and put them back. The Battleborns have the same, not the same post, uh, sort of a bolt down, it's a bolt through or sideways, but the r red positive and the black negative are on the same sides of the battery, if you put them in correctly, that is, and um, it will be uh, very easy if you keep the cables in the right places. So I'm just going to leave this hang here um, for the moment. It's not in our way to remove the battery, and I'm going to put the nut back on. And then and I'm just putting it on loosely so I don't lose it. You know, who knows, maybe somebody wants to, if these were fairly new, maybe somebody might want to buy or reuse these some, for something else. Now, on this one over here, I can feel, and unfortunately a lot of this is just doing it by feel. There's no way to see up in there real well. I can feel one, two, three cables, four cables, really? Yeah, I think it's four cables. All right, and I'm going to try to get on that nut with my wrench. I got it, and oh, here it comes. Get another turn. Yeah, it seems loose. That wasn't too hard. And I'm finger turning it off. Okay, got my nut off. Now I'm going to pull these cables. Okay, so continuing where we left off, what we have is uh, four cables total. One, you can't see, it goes to the rear here. And then uh, three additional. Uh, this one is the ground. To the chassis ground, I can see it come over here to the chassis ground bolt. The green one goes to the um, Zamp Sola. You have to make sure that uh, that gets reconnected. I've got this one, which is the crossover to the other side that I disconnected already. And then the other one, which is going out the rear and up through on a K underneath the bed, is powering the 1000 watt inverter. So, um, it's kind of crazy. I've got one connection on one battery and four on this other battery. Without the 1,000 watt inverter, you would only have three. Um, and it's important to make sure that you get that ZAMP reconnected or you won't have, um, you'll have the battery, the, the um, B1 indicator on the ZAMP telling you it doesn't have a battery connection. So, um, 
Now, in my in this install, I'm actually going to be um, swapping out to Battleborns and replacing the wiring because I'm bringing the wiring inside. But uh, if you are only uh, swapping the batteries and not changing the wiring, make sure you get all those three or four connections connected up to the Battleborn again. And that may be where you need the longer bolt uh, in order to get that through. Now that I've got the negative terminals free on both sides, and I'm going to put the nut back on that side, I'm now ready to go ahead and disconnect the positive connections as well. So on the other end here, again, I'm feeling around. I can feel a single cable. And I'm going to oh, turn that loose. And remove the nut. And try to find Going now. Oh, okay. This is there must be two of them. Never second. Oh, okay. The crossover, unlike the negative crossover, which went through in this case uh, between the batteries on, um, uh, they uh, strung it through the battery holders. The positive crossover, in this case, is coming across in the front and then back down over. That's a whole lot easier to deal with. So I'm just going to leave that sitting there uh, for now. I'm going to put the nut back on the battery. So this battery is now positive and negative disconnected and ready to drop. Let me get a scooter over here and remove. Positive connections. Okay, this one's going to be hard to get into. Oh. Okay, I can feel it, but it's hard to get to. Lots of other cables I'm trying to snake over right on top of where I'm trying to be. To remove this, it's hard to do. As soon as I broke it loose, my wrench popped off again. But if I'm lucky, I can turn off my hand. No, apparently I might have to be lucky today. This one's so hard. I'm having to wrench it off all the way. There we 
There it is. This cable. And now I've got this cable. Now, what's interesting is um, this particular cable, the one that's not the crossover, I can see this one here is the crossover. This one is not the crossover. This one with the crossover that has the yellow um, heat shrink jacket around it. The yellow label red wire is the one that comes over to the black box, uh, goes through the battery disconnect, and feeds the 12 volt inside um, the RV. So this is our uh, power feed to the inside. And so just to confirm, I have, oh, there's one more. There we go. All right, so I have now pulled three cables off the terminal, and I heard the nut drop, so I'll have to fish that out later. Um, but that then frees the negative and the positive on uh, this one as well. All right, so now I'm going to switch from one half to seven sixteenths and wrench, and I'm going to loosen but not remove the bolts, or rather the nuts. I'm going to loosen but not remove the nuts on either side of the battery trays. So let's get a good gap. So the batteries are now loose, and I'm going to go grab the um, packing material from the Battleborn battery to place under this to pull it out. Okay. So I'll get these out of the way. Maybe. There we go. All right. Get my camera set. 
Sei lá, né? É. So I put the um, big insulation pieces from the Battleborn battery down underneath the AGM battery, and I'm now going to, with the bolts on the side loose on the, on the sides, I'm going to lift it up slightly, pull it forwards, and when I get to a certain point, instead of allowing the post here to jam up against the torsion bar, uh, stabilization bar, I'm going to tip it forwards like this, and then with these positioned right, I'm going to let it drop into just like that, and then pull it out of the way. All right, so now we have our battery in the old tray. Try rid of those. Oops. Okay, we're ready to go. So I have the old battery still in the tray. I've got the positive and negative sides in the same order as the uh, battle board that's going to replace it. So I'm going to take my half inch wrench and unbolt it from the tie down strap here. all the way off. Get it loose. Then move the AGM battery and discard properly. And then put the new battle board in the same place and same orientation on the tray. And strap it down. I I need to extend this a little bit. And the trick here is to get it bolted down enough that it won't move in the tray. You don't need to crack the case open, but you definitely. Don't want the battery moving around. So it's not moving, it's tied down. That's it, it's now ready to go back in the same way it came out. We'll put the battery back underneath. And then we're gonna lift it into place. And you might need the help with this. Um, I find it possible to do it uh, like this. I tip it um, up on its front lip. I catch on the back. Let me, oops, let me get you a view of this. So I get the battery. So I lift the battery up on its front edge, balancing it. Line it up close to those lips, tip it into place, and with still angled down, I push it back. Otherwise, it's uh, um, it'll jam if you try to push it in straight flat. It, um, it'll uh, hit the torsion bar here, uh, so you have to angle it up into position. And then the trick is to get it all the way back in where these bolts are set down into a notch. And then grab your 7 16 and tighten the bolts again. Now this battery is 
strapped in here and it does not move. It's ready to go. And we have our bolts already on the um, connection points of the battery. So when we have our, um, our cable, we put those back in place and the same way uh, that they were before or any changes that you might need to make because of rewiring for the lithium system. If you're, uh, if you're just swapping the batteries and doing no other changes, you're going to connect the same cables to the same positive and minus terminals that you had before. Don't forget any of them. Count them when you take them off so when you put them back on, you've got the right count.